Let's look at a problem. A very simple problem. So let's look at this problem. I'll call it problem one. One over ax plus b dx. Where a and b are constants. So we can do this using u substitution. If we let u be equal to ax plus b, then this means that our du dx is just a, and then this means that dx is du over a. So we can go in here in our problem and rewrite this as 1 over u times du over a. So if we factor out the uh, 1 over a, we end up with 1 over u, du. And the answer to this is 1 over a, natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Now, we have to have our answer back in terms of um, x. So this is natural log of ax plus b plus c. So we can generalize this result as follows. We can um, have this sort of as, um, as a formula that whenever you have whenever you have the integral of 1 over ax plus b dx, that this has to be equal to 1 over a, natural log of ax plus b plus c. So this is a result worth remembering. And we're going to come back to it. So remember this. OK. Let's use this result on the next problem. So assuming we have the integral of 1 over 2x plus 7 dx. So using this formula, 2 is a and 7 is b. We know that our result is just going to be 1 over 2. Natural log of the absolute value of 2x plus 7 plus c. Okay. Now. These are two integration problems. Let's look at a problem that you probably did in um, high school or elementary school or pre-calc. Maybe not elementary school. So let's try to add these two fractions. 3 over x plus 1 and 1 over 2x minus 1. All right. If you remember, um, what you have to do is to create a common denominator. Uh, the common denominator would be the LCD of x plus 1 and 2x minus 1, which is just um, the product of both of them. So we can write this as 3. If we multiply the top by 2x plus 1 and multiply the bottom by 2x plus 1, And then the top here will multiply by x plus 1 and also multiply the bottom by x plus 1. We end up with a common denominator and then we're free to just add the top. If we add the top, we have uh, 3 times 2x plus 1 plus x plus 1 all over x plus 1 times 2x uh, plus 1. I think I had um, <laughs> I had minus 1 and I have been writing plus 1. So let me change let me change it to minus 1. Minus 1 and this is minus 1. I have to be careful. Minus 1 and then minus 1 and then minus 1. Okay, 
So if we expand the top, we end up with um, 6x minus 3 plus x plus 1 and over x plus 1, 2x minus 1. This gives us 7x minus 2 over x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. Now, look at what we did. We went from... What we did is that we went from um, 3x or 3 over x plus 1 plus 1 over 2x minus 1 and we went to 7x minus 1 or minus 2 over x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. Now, that's what we did. Now, our question, one question I want us to ask is this or to answer we went from uh we went the forward direction all right can we go backwards are we able to go backwards like this are we able to go from 7x minus 2 over x plus 1 times 2x minus 1 okay so the process of going this way going this direction this is called partial fraction decomposition so that means we are decomposing 7x minus 2 over x plus 1 times 2x minus 1 into its component partial fractions. Okay. Why do we need this? We'll see later on. But first of all, let's try it. Let's try to see how we can do it. How we can go the backwards direction. So, let's, um, I'm going to call this examples. So, example A, decompose 7x minus 2 over x plus 1, 2x minus 1, into partial fractions, it, its component partial fractions. So, this is a good problem because we've um, we already know the answer for one <laughs> second of all the fact that the denominator is factored is giving us a hint so that hint will be that we should let 7x minus 2 over x plus 1 times 2x minus 1 we can write it as a over x plus 1 plus b over 2x minus 1. So if we can find what a and b are, then we're good. Now, we can begin by noticing that we can say 7x minus 2 over x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. If we try to add these two fractions, we're going to have a times 2x minus 1 plus b times x plus 1 all over x plus 1, 2x minus 1. Now, the denominators are the same thing. 
So, the numerators, sorry, the denominators are the same thing. So, the numerators of both sides have to be equal. Now, what can we do? We can say, oh, So we see that 7x minus 2 has to equal a 2x minus 1 plus b x plus 1. And this is for all x, for every possible real number x. So this is not necessarily an equation. This is called an, an identity. But let's not worry about that for now. So we want to find A and B. We're going to go by elimination. If we notice carefully, if we let X be negative 1, if we let X be negative 1, then we're going to kill off the B. Because if you plug in X for negative 1 for X, this part of the equation is going to become 0. Because you're multiplying by 0, b by 0. So let's let x be negative 1. If we do that, then we have plug in negative 1 in 7x minus 1. You get um, negative 9, I think. And then you plug in negative 1 for a, you get negative 3. So this tells us that if we divide both sides, we're going to end up with a is equal to 3. So we have a now. Now, we can look for b by killing off a, eliminating a. If we make x 1 half, right, if we make x 1 half, let x be 1 half. Then, the left-hand side, we're going to end up with 7 times 1 half minus 2. 7 times 1 half minus 2 will give us 3 halves minus 2. No, will give us um, essentially 3 and a half, 7.5 minus 2. Um... So that is going to be 1.5, which is 3 halves. That's what we're going to get. 3 halves on the left-hand side. So try it. Three halves is equal to... So B is gone. Sorry, A is gone. And then b is also 3 halves. Uh, what if I is multiplying b is 3 halves uh, b. Right. So this tells us that b, b is equal to 1. So... Remember where we started. We started here. So we, we've now found A and B. So it turns out that we can say so. 7x minus 2 over x plus 1 times 2x minus 1 is equal to 3 over x plus 1 plus um, 1 over 2x minus 1. So that's our answer. That's our final answer. Okay. Now, we've learned partial fractions. How do this help us? How does this help us with um, integration? Now, the second natural question would be to evaluate 
the integral 7x minus 2 over x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. So this becomes, we can, since we have our dx, since we already have the partial fractions, we can go ahead and split them into partial fractions and split the, the integral into its component partial fractions. So we have 3 over x plus 1 dx plus integral 1 over 2x minus 1 dx. Now, this is where we are going to make use of the first result we got. We're going to make use of this result. So I had a reason for boxing it up. So look at this result. It comes in handy now. Copy it. We're going to make use of it. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to paste it here. Okay. So we're going to make use of this little result right here. That the integral of 1 over ax plus b dx is 1 over a natural log of ax plus b plus c. So let's go one by one. The first integral, the a is 1, the b is 1. So our result is just going to be 3 natural log of ax x plus 1 plus the second one is the a is 1, so is 1 over 2. Sorry, the a is 2, so it's 1 half natural log of 2x minus 1 plus c. So after partial fraction, this becomes easy. So why are we applying partial fractions to this? Because if you look at this integral, we don't know how to do it yet without applying this method of partial fractions. Integration by parts wouldn't work, wouldn't work. U substitution wouldn't make a dent to it, but using partial fractions splits it into two very simple fractions that we can handle. Now let's try another problem. Okay, so number two, let's call it A. Let's uh, find the partial fractions. Of, um, I'm going to go with a uh, 3x squared plus 7x minus 2 over x, x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. So the first thing we can do is to factor the, the denominator. If we factor the denominator, we get x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. We end up with, you factor out an x, you're left with x squared minus x minus 2. All right. And this is going to give you x times x plus 1, x minus 2. Try it. So we're now ready to do partial fractions because 3x squared plus 7x minus 2 over this We can now rewrite it in the in the broken form. The new the denominator we have x times x plus one is x minus two. All right. Okay. All right. So this is gonna let us um, write this as a over x plus b 
over x plus 1 plus c over x minus 2. All right. The previous example, what I did was to um, add up the fractions on the right-hand side, but we don't need to do that. We can just multiply through. Multiply through by x times x plus 1 times x plus 2. So if you multiply the left-hand side by this quantity, you just get the numerator. So the numerator, 3x squared plus 7x minus 2. If you multiply a over x by that quantity, this same quantity right here, you end up with um, a times x plus 1, x plus 2. And then multiply the second second uh, fraction by the same quantity. You end up with b times x, bx times x plus 2. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have to be very careful. I have to be very careful because I had negative. I had minus, but I'm writing plus. So this should be minus. And this should be minus. And that should be minus. All right. And then we have plus C. C. Um, Cx, I think, times x plus 1. All right. Now, again, our method is to try to eliminate something by making one of the factors zero or one of the one of the multipliers zero so if we look at a if we either make x negative one or make x uh two we eliminate a so let's start with making x if we let x be maybe negative one then the left hand side if we plug negative one for the left hand side we get three times 1 plus 7 times negative 1 right here minus 2 so that's going to give us 3 minus 7 minus 2 so what is that 3 minus 7 that's minus 4 minus 2 minus 6 so we get negative 6 is equal to 0. If you plug in 1 here, you get 0. So that kills off the A. Now that kills off the C also. Okay? If you plug in negative 1. All right. So we're left with B times negative 1 times negative 3. Okay? So we have that becomes... Uh, 3b. So this tells us that b is equal to negative 2. So we've got now b. Okay, now again, we can go ahead and maybe let's eliminate b and c. If we let x be 0, if we let x be 0, then the left hand side gives us 2, right? And then we end up with, um, if you plug in zero here, you get um, one times negative two. So you get negative two A, right? And then this goes to zero because X is zero. So this, this quantity is zero and that quantity is also zero. So that tells us that automatically A is equal to 1. Now, I want you, uh, the next thing we could do is to let X be 2. If we let X be 2, if you do the same thing, you're going to get the answer C 
is equal to 4. Try it. Okay. So, we know that our partial fraction now, this quantity can now be... So, I'm going to copy. That's a good thing with writing digitally. You can just copy and paste. So, we know that this now becomes... So, we can say so... A, A was 4. Hmm. No, not A, not uh, 4. A is 1. B was um, negative 2. And C is 4. Now, B part of the question would be to find the integral of this quantity. So let's evaluate integral 3x squared plus 7x minus 2 over x times x plus 1, x minus 2, dx. Now that we have a partial fraction, this integral is no longer scary because this is 1 over x dx minus 2 over x. Actually, I'm going to write it this way. 2 over 2 times integral 1 plus x dx plus 4 times integral 1 over x minus 2 dx. Now, we know what these integrals looks, look like. This is natural log of x minus 2 times natural log of x plus 1. Again, I'm using the formula above, uh, plus 4 natural log of x minus 2 plus c. So all I'm doing is making use of this formula right here that we derived. Okay. Now let's look at the two problems we've done so far. If you look at the denominators, the denominators are linear factors. All right? So these are, we call them simple linear factors. They are linear functions. X plus one is a linear function. Two X plus one is a linear function. These are simple linear factors. Now, this is also, these are also simple linear factors. Now, how about this? Okay. Let's look at let's now look at the problem where we have repeated what we call repeated linear factors. Let's look for um, a. Let's call it a. Find the partial fractions. Of x over x plus 2 squared x minus 1. So the fact that we have x plus 2 squared make, makes this repeated. Repeated linear factors or factor. Oh, factors. Why? Because there is something we have to account for when trying to figure out its partial fraction. We have to write it as x over x plus 2 squared times x minus 1. We have to write this as a over x plus 2 plus 
b over x plus 2 squared plus c over x minus 1. Why? Because since the denominator is that, for anything that has this, de de this particular denominator, it's possible that one of its partial fraction, one of the factors of the denominator is x plus 2, another factor is x plus 2 squared, another factor is x minus 1. Okay? So these are the linear factors. I mean, the second one is not linear. But it's very possible, if you want to add these three fractions together, their lowest common denominator is this right here. So, we have to account for every power of x plus 2. Now, how do we go about doing its um, partial fraction? Again, we multiply through by the denominator on the left-hand side. And if we do that, we end up with x is equal to a times x plus 2 times x minus 1 plus b times x minus 1 plus c times x plus 2 squared. Now we can begin our elimination. If we let x be negative 2, if we let x be negative 2, what do we get? We get um, that the first term will be gone. This term right here is gone, becomes 0. So the left hand side is negative 2. Negative 2 is equal to the first term is 0, the second term is 0, and then the, th the sorry, the third term is 0. The second term, if it's negative 2, we have negative 3, negative 3b, three, uh, I think. Okay, let's check our answers. So we have um, x is there. Yep. Okay. All right. So this means that b is equal to 2 thirds. Now, we can go for x being equal to 1. If x is equal to 1, left hand side is 1. First term is gone. A is gone. The term having A. The term having B is gone. And then we have C. Uh, if you plug 1 in here, you get 3 squared. So you have 9C. Nine, nine, uh, 9C. Nine C. So this tells us that C is equal to 1 9. All right. Now, if you look, there's nothing else we could do. There's nothing else we can do to eliminate one thing or the other. But what's, who is to say we can't plug in more numbers? We can plug in more numbers. We can say, let x be 0. Just choose any number at all. Choose a simple number, which is 0 in this case. If I make x 0, the left-hand side is 0. And then if I plug in 0 for the first term, I get um, minus 2a. If I plug in 0 for the second term, I get minus b. If I plug in 0 for the third term, I get plus 4c. But guess what? We have, we know the values of b and c. So this means that 0 is equal to negative 2a minus two-third plus four over nine. All right, you guys are going to help me out. I'm not too good with quick fractions. But um, let's see. I can do this. So I'm going to make this go here. So 2a is equal to, um, I'm going to write it as negative six over nine plus 4 over 9. So this tells me that 2a is equal to 
or negative 2 over 9. I hope this is correct. So that a is equal to negative 1 over 9. Okay, that's my a. Okay, so we now have a partial fraction decomposition. Partial fraction decomposition. So... We can now go in here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it right here. So that delete all this. So our A is one negative one nine. So let's put right here just one negative one nine. And our B is um B is two thirds and our C is one nine. Now the next question, this is an integration course. Next question is to evaluate the integral x over x plus 2 squared x minus 1 dx so that's going to be all these integrals all this this oh let's put it here put it right here okay so this is going to be integral that dx, I'm going to separate it, plus dx, oh, there's a squared here. plus dx. All right. The first one, definitely one half natural log of x plus two. The second one is not that easy. Hmm. Second one, it's not that easy. I mean, it's easy, but it, it, you can't use that formula. Why did I say it's not that easy? So I'm going to, you can use u substitution to get the second one. So the second one is just going to be, um, I'm going to write down the answer. I want you to check it. Use u substitution. Let u be x plus 2. And check the answer, 2 third integral. Oh, sorry, 2 thirds times x plus 2 to the power of negative 1. And then the third one is 1 ninth natural log of x minus 1 plus c. All right, so one other one, let's try another problem. Let's try number four. Let's do the partial frac fraction, find of let's do 2x squared minus x plus 4 over x cubed plus 4x so i can start this off for you guys but 
I will let you finish it. All right, we're going to start off by factoring. So we have 2x squared minus x plus 4. I'm going to factor an x here. We're left with x squared plus 4. Now, you can see that we can't factor this anymore. If it were negative, we'll factor it to x minus 2, x plus 2. But we can't factor x squared plus 4 anymore. This is called an irreducible irreducible quadratic factor irreducible quadratic factor now there is a way to go about this so this becomes let's take let's get this irreducible quadratic factor Then let's write it as a over x. Now, maybe we can write b over x squared plus 4. We can think of that. But guess what? This is irreducible. The denominator is irreducible. Irreducible. So, it makes sense to assume that the numerator is a linear function since the denominator is quadratic. So you can write this as bx plus c. If you multiply through by x times x squared plus 4, the denominator over here, you end up with 2x squared minus x plus 4 is equal to a times x squared plus 4 plus bx times c times x. Now, if you do that, then you can start by choosing a bunch of things, choosing a, bu a bunch of numbers. If you choose, let's say you choose, um, if you start with saying let x be 0, for x is 0, we can do a lot with x is equal to 0. The left-hand side becomes 4, right? The right-hand side just becomes 4a. So that tells us that a is equal to 1. We get that. Then you can choose other numbers. You can, you can now choose any number you want. Choose simple numbers. Let's say x is equal to 1. What do we get? On the left-hand side, we get uh, 5. And then on the right-hand side, we get 5a plus, and then we get uh, b plus c. But we already know what a is, right? a is 1. So if a is 1, then this reduces to reduces to um yeah it reduces to b plus c is equal to zero now you can choose another number let's choose negative one How about negative one so if you choose negative one um let x be negative one if x is negative one we have 2 minus 1, uh, or 2 plus 1, actually. 2 plus 1 uh, plus 4. 2 plus 1 plus 4. That gives us 7 on the left-hand side. And then on the, on the right-hand side, we have A. If you plug in 1 in here, you get 5a, 5a, but now if you plug in negative, uh, you get plus b minus c, okay? But then, what do we know? We know that a is 1, so we end up with 
B minus C is equal to 2. Okay. Now your job is to solve these two systems, system of equations. Quite easy. Once you solve it, then you're good. All right. We'll stop here and we'll continue in class.